You know what I always wanted? I always wanted DJ furniture, but every time I looked around for it, it was like way overpriced. They never really had all the features that I was looking for. They were heavy, required all this like intricate setup. So you know what I did? I said, screw it. I'm gonna make my own. So here's my custom built DJ furniture. All right, so I'll say this up front. The best thing about this furniture is that it cuts as much time off my setup time as possible, which to me is absolutely priceless. The tops of this furniture is all interchangeable to match my controllers and it's flush mount. So like I said before, I'm waiting for the Rev 7 to come in. And when that comes in, I can't wait to do a build on that. Again, hit me up in the comments if that's something you guys wanna see. So getting back to the new unit that you guys see here, I made this out of OSB wood, right? Because that's a lot lighter and a lot stronger than plywood itself. And the particular unit that you guys are looking at, I have this one cut to size to fit my DDJ SX1, 2, and 3. So the important thing when doing this is I left a small gap, less than an eighth of an inch around the entire side of the enclosure that fits the DDJSX. So this allows me to feed my wires up through the unit and I can hide those wires wherever I want inside that little gap. Now how I got the wires through the bottom of the unit is I drilled a one inch hole through the bottom of the case and I fed the wires through and then I used tire wraps and I screwed them to the bottom of the case. Now this is really cool because it's not visible from the front and guests will never know it. Unless you get down and look under those units, you can't even tell that the wires are coming out there. So this actually worked out really, really well. So once I ran those wires through the unit, I tie wrapped them down the back side of the truss. And I did this for two reasons. Number one, to hide the wires completely from the front of the unit. So if you look at the unit from the front, you don't see any wires on this at all. And number two, to give me different options on my setup, right? So I can run a setup with a scrim, uh, without a scrim, and with a light, or without a light. And in all of those setups, you're never gonna see the wire, unless you're really, really looking for it, or obviously you peek around the back, but it's really hidden in plain sight and this works out um, really well. So not shown here, but just inside the booth, just to get let you guys know what's going on. Um, I've got a, a six power outlet in there. I've got LEDs and I also have my Serato sound switch. So everything is literally contained within this unit. The LEDs that I installed, I did this because I really wanted to give this a slick look and make this stand out from any other furniture that's on the market. So I haven't seen anything like this so far. I mean, you know what, maybe built into some home units, but nothing built for outside um, performing on the go for weddings. So this is really cool. I'm super excited about this. I can't get enough. Um, so with these LEDs, most of the time I have them set on like a seven second slow fade, um, but these can be controlled. They can go to the music, they're controlled by Bluetooth, and you know, they can do a lot. But I leave it on this ambient glow that just goes throughout the entire flow of the event. It's really nice. Um, inside the truss, I usually just place an up light, which you'll see in some of the pictures here. And this is really nice. You can put two up lights on the side if you want to give it a little extra lighting. But typically what I do is I keep it right inside the truss and this gives a nice little ambient glow to the front of the dance floor. And like I said, I can rock two looks with this. I can rock it without the scrim or with the scrim. So I'll say it again, for me, this booth does it all and I'm really proud of the end product and what this adds to my setup. So let's talk a little bit about breakdown and transport. This entire unit can break down into three pieces to transport if I need to. The top comes off and the base comes off. So you'll have the top, the base, and the truss. Now me, I'm lucky enough to have a trailer, so I actually never take this apart. What you see here, it rolls in, it's set up, it breaks down, and it goes. So for transport, I built a padded cover that protects the unit. Um, it has memory foam on the inside, it protects the sides, and protects the controller on the top. I also built a cart with five inch wheels to place the furniture on top for easy transport. So all I do is tilt the furniture, slide it up on the platform, use a tie wrap, wedge it in, and that baby stays like that for transport. Then I need to take another tie wrap and I tie that to the easy track to lock the unit up against the wall. So one thing you'll notice is I left an extra inch on both sides of the unit and this serves as a bumper when the unit goes up against the wall and gets transported for a trailer. So this works out really well. I think in any 
future design that I build for these, I'm always going to include that extra inch. Um, that just protects your unit, protects everything. It doesn't take away from the look of the unit and no one ever notices it, but it's that little extra ingenuity that will make this last a long time. So like I said, I never have to take this apart. It's a stress-free setup. Setup is easy. I just roll it in, plug in three wires, the power, the speaker, the aux monitor, and it's all set to go. All the power is included within the case. So once you wheel this in, it literally takes 30 seconds or less to do your complete setup. To be completely honest with you guys, I actually spend more time deciding where I want to put this thing than I do actually setting it up myself. So what do I do with the wires? The wires, I ran the wires through this little flexi wire loop tube, um, and this just gives the entire setup a cleaner look. So you can't even tell that there's wires going through there. It just looks like one nice wire. Um, and then I coil that up and I tie wrap that right to the unit and then that's how I transport. So that makes my breakdown easy. All I do is unplug the pyre, power, wrap up the wires to the truss, place the furniture on the base, add the padded top, roll it out, and then I'm out of dodge. I love it. So setup used to take forever when setting up a table, a controller, then all the wires. So this just makes it a lot easy. And I've thought about this a lot, guys. I've actually went through a couple different variations of booths that I designed and tried out. And this was the, just the most simplest one for me. I mean, I think less is more in this case. It looks beautiful, it's modern, it sets up, it transports, it houses everything I need. I can't say it enough how much time this has saved me. And I think no matter what controller I get, I will be looking to continue to build out and increase the efficiency of this design as I move forward. So there it is. Let me know what you guys think. This, I like this a lot. You know, this to me is unique. It's one of a kind. It's my own. It fits in all of my venues. It gets a ton of compliments wherever it goes. Brides and grooms, guests, they see the lights glowing and they're always trying to peek around, see what's happening behind the business end of the unit. So I like this a lot and this was a really fun process to build. I'm thinking about doing a tutorial on how this was built. If that's something you guys feel like you want to see, go ahead, give this video a like, a thumbs up, ring that bell, leave a comment, and then I may do a video down the road. I'm also thinking about doing a video about the Rev7. Since that just came out, I'm waiting for my unit to arrive. I'm going to build a case that fits this inside of there. So also leave me a comment if that's a tutorial that you guys want to see. So thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.